Welcome to Audio Sorcerers, Wizards and Gurus to my channel. I'm Dan Spencer, and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is a channel where I teach you how to fetch out recording, mixing, and mastering skills. So in today's video, we're talking about how to install Cakewalk by Band Labs. And the reason I wanted to make this video is because I absolutely love Cakewalk. I've been using this DAW for almost 20 years. I started using this DAW about 10 years prior to even touching Pro Tools. And what's so great about this DAW since Band Labs took it over is that it's absolutely free. It will not cost you a penny. And this DAW isn't like other free DAWs out there. This DAW actually has all the bells and whistles. It's comparable to Pro Tools, Studio One, Ableton Live Logic. It has everything. It'll take you where you want to go. So I know some of you guys starting out are kind of like, well, do I want to start with Pro Tools first or do I want to pay and buy a DAW? You know, what options do I have? If you guys don't want to have the limitations of Pro Tools first and you want to have, you know, free rent to do whatever, and you don't want to pay any money, I recommend definitely going with Cakewalk. This DAW is, again, is fantastic. So before we get to this installation video, I do want to mention that I offer mixing and mastering services. If you go to audiosourcer.com, you can check out my samples and my rates, and I give 10% off to new clients. And if you end up liking this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell, and I have new videos coming out. So with that being said, let's get to this video. All right, so here we are on my computer here. And as you can see, I have Google open. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna search Cakewalk Band Lab. And then the first result that pops up here is Cakewalk by Band Lab, Band Lab Products. Let's click on that. So as you can see, it takes us to the Cakewalk by Band Lab page. And on this page, it gives you all the information on what this DAW does, um, some of the features that exist in it and so forth. So we're gonna click the download button here. And it's going to take you down to this little section here, which is all about the BandLab Assistant. And this Assistant is what is going to install Cakewalk for us. So let's click this download button here and then save this wherever you want to save it. So I'm going to download it here. So now that it's done downloading, I'm going to double click on the application here. And it's going to go through the installation process now. So the first thing that pops up is the login page for this app. And if you don't have an account, you can simply click on the sign up button here. It'll take you to the website, fill out your information and create your account. So pause the video if you don't have an account, go do that and then come back. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to hit the login button. And I'm gonna log in with my information here. So after you log in, the first tab that's gonna pop up is the library tab here. And this is not related to Cakewalk, so we're gonna ignore it. So we're gonna to wanna to go to the Apps tab here, and then you'll see that we have Cakewalk by BandLab, and then we have an Install button. So click on the Install button. And in here you have some additional items you can install with Cakewalk. Uh, the first one being the Studio Instrument Suite. Definitely recommend that. That's all your extra virtual instruments. Drum replacer is great if you're recording live drums and you wanna replace them with samples. Melodyne is a must. That's your vocal pitch correction software, it's fantastic. And theme editor is pretty cool if you want to go to modify what the GUI looks like. So I'm going to leave these all checked and I already have Melody installed um, as I bought it separately from here. So I'm going to hit the install button now and we'll go from there. And now you see I have a little downloading a notice down here and we'll just have to wait for it to complete. So once it's done downloading, it's going to go through the typical Windows installation process for pretty much any software. So our first option here is to select our language. Uh, I'm in America, so I'm using English. I'm going to hit OK. Uh, if you want to read the agreement, feel free to. I usually skip over it. Just hit I accept the agreement and then hit next. Uh, definitely do basic. Uh, don't worry about advanced. This is not important, especially if you're just starting out. So do basic and hit next. This is going to be where your actual VST plugins are saved at. And this typically defaults to where you're going to want them at. So just leave it as is and hit next. And then hit the install button. And it's going to just do its thing now. And once the installation process is complete, this pop-up is going to show up and you have an option to view current release notes. Uh, I'm not going to do that, so I'm going to de-check that and then I'm going to hit finish. And now Cakewalk is all installed. So I don't want to leave you guys uh, completely hanging here. I do want to show you how to open up Cakewalk and at least get it started so you can actually start recording. So uh, you have a couple options to launch it. Uh, you can actually open it straight from the BandLab app here. You can search Cakewalk here by BandLab and it will show up in your apps here. And if you guys decided to save it to your desktop, which I did, it will be right here. 
So we're just going to open it from the BandLab app here. So let's open it up. So when Cakewalk finishes launching, it's going to bring up the Cakewalk start screen. And in here you have four different tabs. The first being new project, which allows you to create a new project. You can create it from a template or you can create it empty with empty project. And then you have recent projects and these will be any projects that you recently worked on. Next, you have existing projects, which allow you to open any project from your computer. And then lastly, you have demo projects, which are pre-recorded projects for you, which you can open up and actually look at what they're doing. It might give you some ideas. You can kind of see how sessions are laid out. So these are pretty cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new project here and we're going to do empty project. So let's click on that. So once Cakewalk finishes creating your project, this is what you're going to see. Now we chose an empty session so we don't see any tracks in here. So next, I just want to give you guys a few tips on how to get started. Again, I'm not going to go into extreme detail because this is not a tutorial on how to use Cakewalk, but how to install it. So the first thing we need to do is to make sure that you have your audio interface set up for recording. So let's go up to edit. Let's go down to preferences, click on that, and then go down to driver settings. And then you want to make sure that you have your playback timing master and your record timing master set to your audio interface that you're using. So I have a focus right, so mine is already set to that. So that's going to tell Cakewalk, hey, which audio interface am I using? Then you're going to make sure you have your sampling rate you want to use. I always recommend for people to record at 44.1. Now I have it on 48 because I'm making a YouTube video and 48 is very typical for video. But if you're doing music, do it at 44.1. And then for your playback and recording here, this is just some extra stuff you don't really need to worry about. Uh, driver mode should be set to ASIO if you're having issues trying to um, find your audio interface. If you have it on something else in here, uh, you're probably not going to see it because most uh, audio interfaces are ASIO. And then for devices here, this is where you can enable what um, actual input and output drivers of your audio interface you want to use. So. In my situation for my output drivers, I have uh, one selected and you see that goes every other. So it's looking at one as actually output one and two, which is my studio monitors. That's where I want to send my output audio to so I can hear it. So most of this is already set up, ready to go. And in some situations, it may already be set up to go for you guys, but this is what you need to look out for if it's not. So if you made any changes, you'll hit apply and then hit close. And then you're all ready to go regarding your audio interface. And really the only other thing I want to show you guys is this section right here. If you right click, you can insert any of these types of tracks or you could do the plus button here and then you have audio and instrument. So for audio, you can actually go in and select your uh, input you want to use. And then for instrument, you can go in here and actually select the virtual instrument you want to use. So you can select this all before you even create the track. So I think that's actually cool for the instrument because I can actually say, hey, I'm going to be using this instrument. Whereas in Pro Tools, we create an instrument track and then we insert the effect or the virtual instrument onto it. So it's a little bit different. This allows you to do it first. And again, there's some other options in here for advanced and stuff like that. But, um, you know, just keep it simple. Just create audio tracks and instrument tracks. That's, that should be enough to get you guys started. So if you guys like this video, let me know. And if you guys are interested in Cakewalk, um, also let me know because I would love to do more tutorials on this stuff because I actually love it quite a bit. So uh, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe because I love making this content for you and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.